Well, we've arrived at Pukimiro Junction, which is about 10 or so k west of Huntley. And it's a, a railway restoration place. They have uh, steam engines here, diesel engines here, and all the uh, stuff that was back from yesteryear. But the reason we're here is just over there, there's a crane that was built in 1874. 1874, that's a fair old time ago. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at that crane and a few other bits and pieces that are here. There it goes. Colin, you tell me about this crane. I mean, they don't, they're not everywhere. I no. mean, they're hard to find. So where did you find this one? Um, well, it was built in 1874 in England. And... 1874. Yep. Wow. And it could lift five tons. Which is a lot in 1874. Yep. And it's all hand work. There's no machinery on it. No. And I found it in uh, Mason Brothers Foundry in Mount Wellington, just opposite the Tip Top Factory. Oh yeah. It had been used for carting uh, foundry core boxes up and down the yard. So we we got that, and then I took it out to my father's place in Papatoi, and we overhauled it and it's been overhauled again since <laughs> wow but most of it's all built of iron rather than steel that's why it's lasted so long so, without rusting oh okay so all those wheels have been have gone into a foundry you know in the sand and, and made no no that yeah. they're still the originals on here oh okay yep. um, but the foundry used to use it for hauling core boxes that they pack sand in around other patterns for other work. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so that, that wire rope is for a five ton rated? Yep. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Is that the original rope I guess? No, no, no that's no, a fairly new a rope, rope actually. Since the, yeah. <laughs> it's a long time ago. It's and only it's, been on about three years. That oh, rope. okay, so it's practically brand new. Yeah, we still yeah. use the crane occasionally. Right, right. Yeah. You were telling me you lifted a, a gardener engine out of something and stuck it on the back of a truck. One yeah. of those green diesels on the, on the so, train. So this is quite, you can move this around? Oh yeah, oh, yeah it's on, yeah, on it's wheels. On rails. Yeah, it was yeah. originally built as a six wheel one and over its life it got centre wheels chopped out. So. Oh okay, yeah. so that's a two wheel drive. Four wheel, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or four wheel drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But everything at that time, you know, it's all rivets and bolts. Yep. So yep. there's no welding whatsoever. No. no. The only welding on it is, at some stage it's fallen over and it's cracked a big gear casting in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's all been brazed up. Oh. Yeah. So we've got we've got a big wheel here. We've got a smaller wheel, which is if if it's hand, you've got a you know you've got a yeah a mission in front of you to pick if there's five tongue hanging on the end of it. Yeah. Um, okay. You can select. There's another big gear on the other side. Yep. If you shift this across, you get into the bigger gear. Oh, right, eh? so yeah. you can sort of... <laughs> yeah. And then by shifting it into the middle, you can actually swivel the crane round as well. Right, yeah, I think that pulls out and it yeah. connects with the ones that are on yeah. the bottom there, but yeah. it's yeah. probably gone past its use by date. The, the... No, no, it still no, it still does yeah. Well, not today it doesn't, unfortunately. It no. <laughs> a bit of oil on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. So how much, oh you've got enough rope to sort of lift it to the top, yeah, yeah I guess yeah. that's all you need. So um, to, to, to uh, lock it, so, you know, like modern cranes have got the, you know, got the big... Yep. Um, this one here, it's got these things here, you just clip them around the rail and tighten them up. Oh okay, big spanner, mm. yeah. yeah, and it's locked to the rails. Yep. So you, you go over, the rails come up. <laughs> oh. No, they don't normally. No, I'm just saying. I mean, yeah. No, just, yeah, if, if you tipped yeah, over, yeah, 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 the rails would come up. Which is very unlikely to happen. Anyway, the, hopefully it doesn't. The, uh, the Puku Mira trains. There it is. Yeah. Cool. The beauty of it being hand operated, you don't need inspect annual inspections on it. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Oh, so you don't... Well, I wouldn't have thought you'd be surrounded with paperwork here, I suppose oh, you are, yeah, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah? I can assure you of that. Yeah, fair enough. 
So Ian's cranking away here, and as I said, if he's got five ton on the other on the other on the hook, he, he has to be a big strong man to do that, or is it all geared down so anybody no, can do it? No, it's geared down, but there's handles on the other side as well. Oh, so somebody else can yeah. help. Yeah, yeah. Right. We saw something exactly like this on the wharf down in uh, down in the ports of Auckland oh, okay. in, in 1898. Yeah, and, and it's a hand uh, crane, and they're cranking something up and putting it on the back of a horse and cart. All right, yeah. <laughs> but pretty much the same. There are two guys, one on each side, to uh, yeah to, to lift up the boxes they were putting on the uh, putting on the cart. And I see there's a. A, 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 something with a hole in it hanging down, yeah. and a bolt further up. I, I guess that's how you can uh, manage the jib. Yep. Oh, yep. We, we made those up ourselves, oh, okay. so you can lower the jib. Wow. So they didn't come with it? No. Huh? No. Well, it's congratulations to you guys. No, yeah. they had nothing when we got it. Yeah. Wow. On the back here, there's a. Looks like it's gone past the use by date, but there's a, a sort of a cranking device. Is that to move this? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. So what was this originally here? Um, it was built for the coal mine. Oh yes. There was a big underground coal mine up the head of that valley where you turn off the road. And that was closed and was opened about 1915 and closed about 1967. What did they do with the coal? Uh, it was very good coal. It went for industrial use and domestic use. And so where did, where did they take it from here? Oh, into Huntley and then sorted out in Huntley oh, where okay. it went north or south. Right, 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 right. This is an old um, Smith excavator, face shovel. Um, it's been here for a long, long time and gradually become more decrepit and overgrown as time's gone on. Fortunately, the mine have cleared out the, the undergrowth a bit so we can see what we've got again. But it would have been an interesting old machine in its time. It's got all the uh, the levers and bits and pieces around the back. So there would have been um, that would have been the the driver's position here, a motor on the back out there. There's crawler tracks under there. So. I'm not sure whether it would be of interest to anybody, but um, it would be free to a good home if somebody wanted some bits off it at some time. Um, it's not something, unfortunately, that we'll ever be able to do anything with, but it would be a shame to, um, to not see something done with it. The, um, it's got a couple of the little little brass plaques that tell the operator what to do with these levers. Uh, little handles here for different things and over there. But it's an interesting old machine and no idea how old. Jim might know, won't you? Oh, I don't know how old it be. No. But it's um, another piece of old history gradually rotting away, unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm not sure. But, yeah. See, there's a nameplate on it. Um, the, somebody took the nameplate off recently, but it was um, it was labelled as a Smith, a Smith, a Smith of Rodley. Smith of Rodley. Yeah. But you know, beautifully done with these little brass plates and so on. Yeah. That one's still got one. A jaw clutch. Yeah. Hmm. Yep, yeah, a couple of pedals for whatever. Brakes, I suppose, would it be? Yeah, brakes on the wood. Yep. Yeah.
Yeah, so if somebody would like it, um, they'd be most welcome to come and dismantle it or whatever they would like to do because beyond us to do anything with, unfortunately. DMAG stands for Uncompromising Quality. As one of the world's leading manufacturers of high performance and reliable industrial cranes, crane components and drives, we offer our customers a comprehensive range of smart solutions for their material flow and logistic needs. Our name is synonymous with maximum safety, reliability and innovation. We provide our customers with smooth processes, maximum efficiency and best results. So, want to find out more? Just call All Crane on 0800 All Crane or check out their webpage www.allcrane.co.nz. Tadano have been building cranes since 1956. Tadano is the name in mobile cranes, from two axle to seven axle cranes, as well as track cranes. Tadano, a great choice of crane. So if you're looking for a crane, why not choose Tadano? Tried and true. To find out more, just go to allcrane.co.nz. Well, this is the biggest bulldozer in the world. It's a Komatsu 575. It came up from Stockton, uh, the Stockton mine down in Westport. And uh, it's pretty much gone past its use-by date. There's a lot better ways to shift dirt than using one of these. There were two of them. And the other one's down in Cambridge at the Ross Brothers Museum. And so if you go to the Ross Brothers Museum, you'll see it in their shed there. It's an enormous. And um, the people who own this decided that they'd bring it up to Auckland, which is where it is now, and uh, put it together and uh, use it more or less as a letterbox. <laughs> Want of a better word. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how they actually did that. So they brought it up, I think, on five trucks. They took it up the back there and they, uh, they put it together. And if anything ever needed cranes, it's certainly this thing here. Even the blade, it's <laughs> absolutely enormous. I think 150 tonne, they had two of them, so they had a double push. They had 300 tonne of, of material in front of the pair of them. And you'll see that, look at this. But uh, just standing here, it's just amazing. I got to drive this when he put it together. I got in that cab there and uh, lifted the blade and uh, we rolled along a bit. And it was absolutely fantastic. And at the end of it all, I said, when do I start? <laughs> so uh, let's watch this thing being put together. We start the ball rolling in the middle of the night on Auckland Southern Motorway as the body of our super dozer heads to its destination on the back of a piloted transporter. The super dozer was dismantled some days earlier at Stockton and this body has come across Cook Strait and on up the North Island to this point. Its other components are on another four trucks that are following it up and the blade itself will be coming up in a few days time but that too is a transporter load by itself. As I talk to Jamie, we'll watch this 575 go back together. With me is Jamie, and welcome to our little show, Thanks, Jamie. Sure. And um, a 575 bulldozer is enormous, you just have to say. And uh, we've spent the last week watching this thing go back together. And there's things about it that just, you know, this is like the, just a little driving wheel on the back, eight ton. Yes, just, just one component, you know, so all up, I guess, the thing. What is, you know what it weighs all up? Uh, we calculated it out to be roughly about 172 tonnes. So as it sits on the as ground? As it sits on the ground. <laughs> yeah, all put together. <laughs> wow. And down in Stockton, you had two of them? Yep, two, two 575 dozers. First one came in 2006, and the second one arrived in 2007. In 2006, work must have stopped the day that turned up. 
Oh, it would have, yeah. well, the, work, the work ended up starting. <laughs> right. And it was used for stripping, that, that, was, that was its job. Yep, yep, stripping a cap rock and, and large dozer push jobs. What's a large dozer push job? Uh, so they, to pull the overburden off them, uh, to get it off the coal, they'd push the overburden and up to about 180 metres from, from where it was. Just look at this footage, folks. There's two of these things together, just pushing dirt. Yep. Together. So probably uh, with the two dozers pushing dirt side by side, they were pushing somewhere around about uh, 300 to 350 tonnes together <laughs> in a tandem push. Yeah. And so when the first one turned up and, and it started its job, um, it was just 24 hour day, hot seated? Yeah, yeah hot seated. Uh, with servicing through the day, you probably averaged out at 20 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow. And the other one, when it came, it was the same. Exactly the same. They both worked 20 hours a day and stopped for refueling, servicing twice a day. So this didn't belong to Stockman. It was a contractor who you yes. had the machines and he yeah. was hiring them out, I suppose. Yeah, we had operators on it um, full time. So three operators? Uh, four, four operators. Four, okay. four operators. There'd be two operators on a day shift and two operators on a night shift. Wow. <laughs> and, and at night time, I mean, there's not a great deal of light up at that stock, and you know, they no, so would just be working on the on the lights on the on, on the lights on the tractor. Yeah. Wow, that's just <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, uh, we're quite fortunate. Likes of Bart, um, he's done a lot of work on those machines in the past, and um, you know, put them together and, and dismantled them when we're doing maintenance on them and, and uh, undercarriage changes. So knows where everything's got to go and, and well versed and, and what's required in it. Do you get a book when you buy your bulldozer? Here's the book on how to take it apart and how to put it back uh, together. So there, there's an assembly book. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, so the easy scenario is it's pages 1 to 40. Yep. And then when you want to disassemble it, you start at 40 and go, <laughs> go back, back to, to 1. one. <laughs> <laughs> now, now the, the stripping, I mean, that's, <laughs> it's just, I just got to get my head around stripping. It can be uh, anywhere between uh, 10 metres and 50 metres deep. Okay. Yep. And that's all got to be pushed off. It's all got to be moved off. Um, so once once they've done that, and they've got done the coal, that's all come out. Does that dirt go back? It, it goes back on top. Yeah. And it's like nothing ever happened. Like yeah, nothing ever happened. They take the seam of coal out and then put the overburden back on top and rehab it. Rehab meaning put the plants back. Yep, plants back and shape <laughs> it all up and make oh, the okay. trees grow again. A lot of people, not a lot of people know that. Um, Mickey from you know the tour guy was telling yep. me, you know, the, he made a point of actually showing us all the overburden, if you like, and and, and the, where it's been put back and the, and the rehab put on top. Yeah. He said that you're not a, you know, the greenies rave on about you know this is destroy, 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 but you're not. You're actually doing what you have to do, and then oh, that's right. Put it, put it back. Uh, yeah, you know, while we we're down there, we had two purposely built tractors built, um, purposely built buckets to, um, and same sort of scenarios like picking up ready lawn. Uh, with the excavator bucket, would scoop oh, okay. a, a sod of vegetation up, so it's still intact. Place on these tractors, and the tractors would lay it back on the ground as if it uh, had never been changed. <laughs> In the final drive, when they were putting this machine together, I noticed that there was a, it's just a, a little set of gears, yep. and it slotted over that. If you look at a, the winches, we do a fair bit of four-wheel driving, folks. When you take it apart, what's driving that winch 12,000 pounds is a thing about the size of a pencil. Essentially, it's the same winch, except you could um, winch all your four-wheel drive club at once. <laughs> yeah, <that's> <laughs> oh, okay. It's just interesting how the the engineering, you know, of of these big machines is big doesn't necessarily mean it's driven by something big. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the Japanese have done a fantastic job with uh, engineering that machine. The Japanese when things were made in Japan. You know, when I was a boy um, in the fifties, sixties, a lot of things were made in Japan. And everybody, Ugh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> now everything's made in China, and the Japanese. The stuff is actually quite good. I know the, the Daiwa fishing reels that, that are actually made in Japan yeah. is just last forever. It's, it's equivalent made in China, sort of lasts about four fish and you've got to throw it away. Yeah. You know? uh, but it's just saying, uh, you know, the Japanese have, have they copied? Come no, they copied or it's all original? It's all original. They've made their own things. They, they tend to listen to their clients on what, what needs to be done. So uh, they're very, very mindful of making things better and improving. Uh, equipment and um, 
we've got a number of equipment that's um, you know been in the business for you know upwards of 15 to 20 years that is still going, and it's only a, a direct credit to their engineering abilities. Wow! So did Mr. J well, did the, did the guys from um, come up to come down here or down to Stockton? Oh yes, definitely. They were very hands-on there with maintenance and um, looking after those machines. Uh, the biggest thing is support afterwards. Right. Uh, that, that's mechanical support and part support. So they're very hands-on and understanding what, what your needs are. That's just amazing. If I turn up here for a job driving a bulldozer today, my first job is to go and learn how the blade works, I suppose, is it? Or no, I'd probably learn how to clean it first. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> You're on the bottom, boy. Here's your brain. <laughs> But yeah, the training, uh, the training side of it is uh, there's a lot of intensive paperwork um, to start with, um, learning what the machines do. The, the, the most critical parts are um, knowing how to pre-start the machines, where the oils and waters and, and, oh, and okay. stuff like that is, where to check them, what those levels are, um, checking all your cap bolts, your track where your rollers, uh, checking for cracks, uh, wow. your, your wear on your blades. So this all happens before you start the thing? Before you start the thing, every, every, every day. Good God. So how long is that, an hour? Uh, that takes probably around about 10, 15 minutes. Oh, okay. So how do I know there's a crack in the blade that wasn't there yesterday? <laughs> uh, and that's from checking. So, so you'll go around, you, uh, guys do uh, visual checks in the mornings. They'll do a uh, visual check if they hop off at smoker time, a quick walk around your machine, uh, second smoke in the day and at the end of the day. And that's all recorded on a pre-start sheet, so everybody knows. Oh, okay, so next guy goes, oh, yes, that's checked, that text, that text. Yep. He has to do his own checks. Yeah, well, he has to do his own checks, yeah, and yeah. the maintenance crew uh, get those sheets, and they go through, and they program them when it needs so to be. So you said they were serviced you know, every day, during the day? Pretty pretty much. The, the, the servicing side of things was uh, uh, checking all your oils and waters, checking your levels, uh, checking your wear, Checking your GET, so that's your, your cutting edges, your ripper boots and, and, and that on the machine. And then uh, after that, it needs to be fueled. It takes 2,100 litres of fuel uh, and grease, sorry, obviously. I didn't hear that, sorry. <laughs> 2,100 litres of fuel, which you will burn in a, in a shift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So once uh, those guys fuel those up, they uh, fill up uh, with grease also. Um, and it's checked by the um, serviceman going around and checking it, and then he'll do as a visual check on the machine also. When you put the blade forward to do a bit of digging, how far down can that blade dig? Uh, about 1.6 metres, so it can get really? down to. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and the ripper? And the ripper's about, uh, about the same, it's about 1.7 I think, and it depends on the configuration. It's You can lengthen it and shorten it, um, it's got holes at uh, certain segments, and you can lengthen or shorten, depends on the rock that you're going through. And it does it, the, I mean, you know, the strength in that ripper is just... Oh, it is, it is very nothing, strong. Nothing yeah. can stop it? No. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> mm. Then you see some of these big graders going along, and they've got three rippers sitting out the back. This has only got one. Yeah. Yeah, probably two would slow it down a bit. Uh, yeah, it would definitely do, and you'd have to get, uh, run it through a lot softer ground. Oh, right. righto. Yeah. But one, anything, bulletproof. Yeah, that's right. And it didn't come with a ripper. Were the rippers put on afterwards? Yes, the the dozers were, the 575s came out as a super dozer or a super ripper. The super dozer um, obviously has the big blade that you've seen there um, and has a counterweight on the back and has different final drives, which were those eight ton final drives that we're yeah, looking at, yeah, those yeah. slightly smaller. The Super Ripper uh, comes with the, the Ripper box on the back, different final drives, and a smaller blade. Oh, okay, so it's totally just blades just to push things out of the way while it's ripping. Yes, that's correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So th this system here, um, there's 41 of these dozers in the world now, 475s. Uh, the, the, the two that we have are the only two in the world that are uh, Super Dozer and Super Ripper at the same time. Okay, so that makes it quite unique. Very unique. And, and has that gone past their use-by date? Uh, definitely not. No, definitely not. The, uh, the machines uh, are only major components. Um, you know, it, it's, it's only a Dulux paint on the outside, so if you want to paint it up, it'll still look new. Oh, okay. So all you're changing is major components. Right. So it can start work tomorrow? It definitely can. So yeah. when we go up there shortly and start it up, it, it'll, it'll be ready to go, go and do a job. Yep. Yeah, yeah, wow.
Fassy, an extraordinary crane. So if you need a crane fitted to your truck, either behind the cab or on the back, then Fassy is the crane you need. Fassy can load your truck and trailer as well as unload them. A versatile crane that saves time and money. So to find out about getting your Fassy crane, just call All Crane on 0800 All Crane or check out their webpage at www.allcrane.co.nz. The Jekko Mini Crane, without riggers, designed to get into small areas and confined places like stairs, passageways, things like that. Because they don't have a huge setup time, this saves money and time. Jekko, the crane that does all those little jobs in tight places. For more information, check out www.allcrane.co.nz. Here's the 575 Super Dozer put back together and it's in working order ready to go. Going past on the other side of it is a modern Caterpillar D8 just to give you a sense of how big this machine really is. Well Jamie let's see uh, see if it goes. See okay, if those Bill. engineers did a good job. Yes Bill this is the blade control here. This is your up and down on your blade, controls your pitch and side to side. This is the ripper at the rear of the machine. This controls up and down and the pitch or the ripper at the back. This is the left track control, this is the right track control, this is the accelerator, and this here is the gear lever for forward and reverse. Pedals of your brake and your decelerator, and this nice big bar here is your footrest. All you can say is wow! <laughs> <laughs> So there it is, all put back together the way it was. As I said, they definitely needed cranes to help them do that. So now it sits at the gates of the owner's quarry for all to see. <laughs>